Hi there, in this video I'm going to machine the rear frame for the Farm Boy hit and miss engine. Okay, so in my previous video when I machined the front frame I mentioned that I'm not great at visualising 3D objects from 2D drawings and Ron suggested that I use a product called SketchUp um, but I know nothing about SketchUp but then it dawned on me that I've been trying to learn Fusion 360 for quite some months now so I thought, well, why don't I try and put the 2D drawings into Fusion 360 and create a 3D object? And it was a great sort of learning exercise for me because I had to do things that I've never done uh, in Fusion 360 before. Um, and having produced a 3D object in Fusion 360, I thought, well, why not print it? So I've made that. So this is the rear frame. And the only bit I struggled with were the top bits here uh, because this face here is at an 8 degree angle. So all I need to do now is to replicate that by machining this lump of aluminium. So the aluminium is cut to size on the largest sort of dimensions and uh, I, I think the, probably the best starting point is to look at machining uh, this face here which is like I mentioned 8 degrees um, from perpendicular um, so I think the best way to approach this is first of all I'm going to cut a section out here on the bandsaw and then I'll get back to you okay so I've uh, roughly cut this out with the bandsaw and now I'm going to uh, mill the foot and I'm going to go down to a depth of uh, 0.625 of an inch along here and that will get me to the point where I can start to make the other cut at um, an 8 degree angle. Well that seems to work very well, I've got a great finish on it. Um, so what I need to do now is clean everything up and I need to tilt the vise that way so I can cut an 8 degree angle on that face. Well I wasn't happy with that approach so what I decided to do was uh, get this piece of scrap and mill an angle of 8 degrees on it. So if I put in that, that in the vise now and then put the rear frame on top of that, that will now give me the angle of 8 degrees that I need to machine down to. And also adopting this approach, hopefully I can use a similar approach when I put it on the rotary table to cut the arc. Well that seems to have worked out okay so far. So I'm going to leave it in the vise and try and put the vise on the rotary table to cut this arc. Okay so um, first of all I centred the table and then I put the vise on the table and centred 
on the midpoint on this edge here and um, it's sort of quite tight with this little mill um, so I'm using an R8 collet um, sort of in the head and um, what I need to do is I need to cut a radius of um, 0.75 of an inch um, but I'm using, I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter end mill so half of 10 millimeters is 5 millimeters take 5 millimeters off 0.75 of an inch and you get to 0.553 of an inch so I need to move the x-axis 0.553 of an inch so I'll um, put the end mill in and uh, I'll get back to you so the drawing shows the distance between this edge and the edge of the arc to be half an inch and I've just measured that and it's spot on so uh, I'll commence cutting So I'll continue cutting to the required depth and then I'll get back to you. Well that worked out okay. Um, I think actually the um, arc on the printed version is slightly lower than what it should be. Uh, but that is spot on. So what I need to do now is mill out all of this section here down to a depth of at least an inch. Well this is going to take some time. So when I uh, machined the front frame, Dave Ticehurst uh, made a comment and uh, suggested that the best way to remove deep pocket material on stuff like this is to use a slot drill, also known as a two flute end mill, which is what I've got in here. Now it's quite stubby as my end mill, um, so I'm only going down about a quarter of an inch at a time and then just getting rid of what remains after that. Um, but it does re remove material very quickly. So still quite a few more to go. So to remove the bits in the middle, I'm using this four flute rougher. Well that's most of the material removed. Now it's just undersized at the moment, so what I'll do off camera is just tidy up these faces.
Well, the inside uh, came out very well. Um, I think on some of these inside corners, you're supposed to put a radius on, um, but it's a bit too difficult, I think, for me. And I was fancying on um, putting an eight degree sort of angle on that, uh, so that face is parallel with this one. Uh, but again, I think if I was to do that, I'd struggle getting a decent finish down there, so I'm gonna leave that. Um, so now onto the sides. So I've marked up both sides. This is a more complicated side. And that's a simpler side. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to machine these edges here. So I can get the two pieces fitting together. Once I've done that, I think I'm going to tackle the easiest side first. So just checking that the rear's nice and level. And that's spot on. So I need to go down to a depth of 0.275 of an inch. And once I've completed this side, I'll do the other one. Well, that seems to have worked out okay. So what I need to do now is machine this area down to that thickness, but leave this area protruding, which is where one of the bearing caps will fit. Just another 200 thou to go. Perfect height. Spot on. So all I need to do on this side is remove that piece there and that piece there to the same level. But I'll do that off camera. Well that worked out very well, very happy with that. Um, so what I need to do now is machine the other side, which is similar uh, but it's just got an additional piece sticking out here. Uh, but the process will be, be the same as the other side, so I'll do all that off camera, then I'll get back to you. Well, that turned out okay. Um, one thing I haven't done is drill this hole here for the cam gear, um, because I'm going to do that at the same time that I drill the holes for the uh, crankshaft bearings. Um, so I need to make some bearing caps at some point in time. And um, the, the reason why I'm not going to drill that um, until I do the bearings is because the distance between the two is quite critical. It needs to be spot on. Uh, apart from that, it's looking pretty good. I mean, there's uh, some, a few tool marks on it, on both pieces, to be honest. But I'm not going to do anything um, about those until I join the two pieces up. And the plan recommends that you use a couple of countersunk screws on each side and some JB Weld to join the pieces up. Like I say, once I've joined them up, uh, I'll then um, sort of finish it off with a, a bit of wet and dry. Um, it looks okay so far. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice. It really is very much appreciated and I hope everybody's staying safe. Um, now Andrew uh, Douglas, he messaged me a couple of uh, weeks ago, I think it was in relation to the bandsaw, and he mentioned 
um, that you can get a really good buy from screw fix this WD-40 um, big quantity five liters there and it comes with its own little spray and uh, that's probably a lifetime supply for me and it is really good value and the spray is, is you have more control over it than an aerosol can so I'm really impressed with that so uh, thanks for the uh, information Andrew now one thing um, on this rear frame um, one thing I haven't done is drilled and tapped any holes and I've been debating long and hard um, as to what type of thread to go with because the drawings uh, use UNC threads and I've got no UNC taps or dies. I've got quite a few metric and I've got um, quite a few BA and my initial thoughts were to try and convert to BA and then a couple of days ago um, I thought I might try and convert to metric and I put a message on model engineer's site and I got a few, uh, well I got quite a few replies um, but at the end of the day I decided that it's probably too much hassle trying to convert um, so I've ordered some um, UNC taps and dies uh, from Kronos they, they do high speed steel ones at a reasonable value I've used them before uh, for taps and dies so I'm just waiting for those to arrive um, so I might off camera just drill a few little holes in here um, but uh, anyway uh, I hope you like the results so far and uh, I hope to see you later <laughs>